Okay, so I can't control myself because I often can't, and I'm just going to go and I'm going to try and put blue in it. I have no idea what's going to happen, and it might be ugly. But let's try. No, because guess what? It looks like there's purple in this blue. So it's certainly possible it's going to be a masterpiece. But I see I was very careful with the blue because that blue has purple in it, which means it has red in it, which means I have to be careful that it's going to actually absorb into my fleece. Okay, so now what's happening? Okay, this is how I end up with great colors, I'm telling you. It starts out a mistake, and now it's going to be gorgeous. But see, okay, I want to show you something. I just put all that blue in there. Look. See? And it was hardly really technically hardly any blue. You have to be very careful with putting your blues in. I mean, a little goes a long, long, long way. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep moving it around because I want these pieces of white that are here, I want them to pick up the blue. I, I know what I'm doing. I know it doesn't look like it. Okay. So now the blue is getting less and less because it's finding pieces of fiber that aren't saturated with dye. And look at this. Now I have this weird green in here. We already talked about it. I'm not a big fan of green. But that was kind of a bright green. That was kind of a, like a yellowy green. And that makes me happy. Because it gets closer and closer to chartreuse. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. See that? See how pretty that became? It started out just ugly. I really wanted a brown fleece, but it's really not going in that direction, I can see. Oh, well. We'll see what happens. One time I made a pot kind of like this, and I think I called it, like, Blackberry Forest or something. And the funny thing was, I didn't actually put any foresty colors in there. See? The dyes sometimes just do what they want. They have no regard for me or what I want. They sort of take off on their own. But you learn your dyes. You have to learn your dyes. And you learn what they want to be, and you learn how they want to work. Experience, there's no replacement for experience. I, and I can make videos, and I, you, know, you can read books, but the best thing to do is to continue to experiment and try. Okay, I'm going to take a break for a minute, because we're going to have to let this sit. I'll tell you uh, um, as soon as we cut back how much time I've left it on the stove, and um, we'll finish up. Thank you so much, and hang on just a second. Hi, here we are again. It's been about 10 minutes. I let my pot simmer the entire time, and now I had to turn down the heat because I didn't want it to boil. I didn't mind if it, it simmered a little bit and got a little bit rolly, but I didn't want it to completely boil and then end up ruining my fleece. The entire time I had been turning it, and now I think it's almost time to take it out. What I had to do is I kept checking with this white thing, kept checking to make sure to see how much dye was left over in here, and I thought there was a little bit too much, and I don't mind having a little bit of a pastel color as accents, so I put the remainder of my fleece, um, white fleece in here to absorb the rest of the dye. And as I told you, the reds are notorious for um, not being color fast and they often have a difficult time adhering to all the fiber. And so sometimes I'll do that. If I see that there's a lot of dye left in the pot, I'll just stuff more fleece in there, stuff more vinegar and um, wait about 10 minutes. So if this pot had way more dye than it does now, because this is pretty clear, I mean, it's not cloudy. If it had way more than this, I would just put a little more vinegar in it and let it sit overnight. I'd let it cool overnight outside. Then the next morning, I would dump it out, and then I would gradually start increasing the temperature of the rinse water from the same temperature as the fleece was um, until it was really hot. And then I would put Dawn and wash it, and that's what I'm going to do now. What happens is I know that a lot of you have heard that if you want your fleeces after you wash them to be um, particularly shiny, you'll put a tiny bit of vinegar in them. Well, I've got about a gallon of vinegar in here, and now it'll be gummy. So I can't just take and just dump it out on my dry rack and let it dry, or I'm going to have a gummy fleece. So what I do is um, now I'm going to take it, put it in my sink, use some Dawn, extremely hot water, because remember, I don't want to change temperatures and felt it, and then I'm going to... Um, get all the little pieces of, you know, dye that did not end up coming out before. So here we go. So it still has, you can see, a little bit of blue, but I don't even think I can get all that out. I mean, there's really not, I, you can see there's still fleece in here that would have um, absorbed it if it was absorbable. And it didn't take it. So that's telling me that that bit of dye was going to be in there no matter what. Okay, now I'm going to try and I'm going to 
I mean, this is not bad at all, especially for a blue that has a lot of purple in it. And what I love is I started out wanting brown, and here I have like a foresty green with sort of an eggplant and then this really um, bright sort of blues and greens. But that's what art is. You just let it be what it wants to be. It's not like I don't have more fleece. I mean, I've got, you know, a hundred sheep and goats. For some of you, you want, might want it to be a bit more predictable, but like I said, you have to know your dyes. That one dye was just absolutely not going to make a chocolate brown with a white fleece. Okay, so I'm letting it drain, picking these little second cuts out. This is exactly why people don't want second cuts, because they do stuff like this. And I sheared this goat, so not perfect, but I do a pretty good job. There we go. Okay, so you can even see, like, if you look in here, the water looks relatively clear until you, you know, dump the whole thing in there, and then you can see there's still some blue left over. But I want to get rid of that, and I also want to get rid of the vinegar, so I'm going to turn my water on really, really hot. Here we go. I'm going to sort of rinse out my fleece a little bit. I really, and come and see in here, and you can see there's really not very much blue coming out, and that's what I want. If there was a ton of blue coming out, this would be a nightmare. You would never be able to make it color fast. You tr technically would have to put it back in the pot, put a bunch of vinegar in it, and retry to fix it. You'd probably even have to add a bunch of fleece. Now, so this is how I make my stuff color fast. If there's any loose dye that was just sticking to the fibers and not really absorbed by the fibers, this Dawn is going to release it. See all that? That happens no matter what. Even if my water was clear, that would happen the minute I put Dawn in it. So I'm just going to keep doing this until my fleece does not bleed anymore. So we're going to cut for a minute. I'm going to do this and then we're going to come back and I'm going to take it out. I'm going to dump it out. We're going to see what color it is and um, let it dry. Just a second. Okay, so here we are at the sink. I just got done finished rinsing this. It's been about maybe two or three minutes. And um, as you can see, it's not chocolate brown. It's not even close to chocolate brown. What happened was, as I said before, the, the fleece decided to absorb the purple in the chocolate brown, so it's sort of eggplant. Then I added a little bit of turquoise. And the remaining fiber picked up certain parts of the turquoise. Some of it ended up to be this sort of blue color, and some of it ended up to be this green color. And to be honest with you, I'm a little bit happy because I actually have two people that want some green fiber and I wasn't really willing to make it because well I don't really like green that much so um, but now guess what I have it so I'm gonna take this outside we're gonna see it in the sunshine I'm gonna pull some things apart and show you what happens inside these like purple clusters of fiber and you're gonna be amazed so come on it'll probably take maybe a day for this to dry in the heat of California. I have fiber out here that it was on another one of my videos a couple of days ago, and I let the sprinklers hit it, and so it's out here again. Not very smart, huh? Okay, so here we are. There's what it looks like. Okay, so some of the fiber, because I saw a little bit of blue left in my water, I just put some um, plain white fleece in there, and that's what this little light stuff is. It wasn't in the dye pot originally when you first saw me dyeing. It just picked up the straggling pieces of dye. And so I have this gorgeous kind of an emerald color. But I want to show you what happens, how I get khaki. See in here in the purple? Look what happens when I pull the purple apart. There's like a green color inside. And so to be honest with you, I don't know if you can see it very well, this is how I made this yarn. So the base color of this green came exactly from this. And you can see in here there's some purple. And obviously I added, dye, I added some wool um, from a different dye pot like the hot pink. But any of the purple you see in here, the khaki green, is from something just like this. So once again I would have loved to have had some brown, but that's alright. What I'll try, try to do is I'll grab probably a tote please, or something from one of my goats. My um, uh, Angora goats and I'll try and see if that works and if not I'll probably have to ditch this dye. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find me at, on Ravelry at Namaste Farms Group. You can find me on my website www.namastefarms.com. Thank you so much for joining me and have a nice day.